Well, ladies and gentlemen, Scully Belgareth here, finally, with Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. I was going to basically sit through the entire intro, uh, but I think I'm too excited, okay? The intro cutscene is amazing, and if you want to watch it all, by all means do, but I'm really excited for this game, okay? I've been waiting for this for about four or five months. Like, as soon as they announced it, I have been waiting for it, and I pre-ordered it almost as soon as it was available. So, yeah, we're going to go with... No, of course we're going to stick with Link. We're going to stick with Link, but we need to go back to lowercase because this is not playing ball. So, we're going to Link, Link, K, and... And we're going with the Pona as well. And, of course, because I love this game and because I've played this game a million times on the, on the Wii, my version was the Wii, unfortunately, uh... I will be playing in hero mode, and as soon as it's available, this is going to be with the Ganon amiibo, so instead of taking double damage as you do in hero mode, obviously, with no recovery items, I'll be taking quad damage. Here is the intro, with Lincoln Russell, chilling by the Faron Woods Spirit Spring. Uh, <clears throat> let me get into mode here. Tell me, do you ever feel a strange sadness as dusk falls? Why, yes I do, Russell. All the time, I get quite melancholy. The day slips away so quickly. They say it is the only time our world intersects with theirs. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Parallel world nonsense. Uh, the only time we can feel the lingering regrets of the spirits who have left this world. So the Twilight Realm is also the afterlife, it seems. Double duty. Very reliable. Really handy. Russell looks amazing. Although, he does have suspiciously dark eyebrows. Uh, this is why loneliness always pervades the hours of Twilight. And here I thought it was just me getting melancholy. You know, I miss the sunshine. <laughs> really. I'm nocturnal. Uh, I live in the darkness. I live because I'm Batman. No, and because I'm Link. No, but anyway. But enough talk of sadness. I have a favor to ask of you, Link. I was supposed to deliver something to the royal family of Hyrule the day after tomorrow. Uh, it was a task set to me by the mayor, but instead, would you go for me? Basically, uh, would you take this sword? Because you don't get out much, lad, and you're a strapping young lad, but you have been living on the ranch for a bit, and we want you to get out and see the world, maybe travel, you know? In the Kingdom of Hyrule, there is a great castle, and around that castle is a castle town, funnily enough. A community far bigger than our little village, and far bigger than Hyrule as the rest of the world created by the gods. You should definitely look upon it all with your own eyes. Go out travelling. Maybe after you finish university. Go out there, find Labyrinthia, Termina. You know, just go on to that other place I can't remember from seasons, because I think Labyrinthia was ages. Uh, Planeru. Go to Lanieru. You actually do later on, but you could go now, you know, well, after, wait, you know, get some money first so you can travel. Okay, say, pay your respects to the spring, you know, just give it a little salute there as we take Epona, beautiful, beautiful Epona, uh, with you back to Oridan Village. I am going to try really, really hard not to spoil this game, even though it has been out since 2006. Okay, so I would be within my rights. Okay, but I realize this could bring in a new audience. I'm not going to spoil it. They are locking the way to the woods because God forbid, God forbid, you want people going through those woods and out into the open world like we've just encouraged Link to do. There we have the more modest uh, Oridan spring there and Russell, of course, leading Epona back. Epona being very strong, carrying all those bundles of firewood. Because, yes, firewood. They would really need to go so deep into the forest to get firewood when Link lives in a tree. <laughs> Pretty much. Like, like Ocarina of Time, Link lives in a tree. So we're saying goodbye to Russell. There's little Colin and Uli. I want to say Uli. I do know all these names, I swear. Like, I'm a massive Zelda nerd. There is. Of course, my favourite Link, I have to say. Twilight Princess Link is my favourite Link. Twilight Princess is one of my favourite Zelda games, but Twilight Princess Link is definitely my favourite Link. Okay, it's getting towards the end of the day. Link, being a negligent little sod, has gone straight in to have a nap because it's been very tiring sitting by those springs, gathering those twigs, while poor opponent has been carrying them all back. So, kindly, member of the village has come to take opponent off for a bit of a wash. Meanwhile, this guy who... Now that I've said I know all the names, I immediately don't know his name. He's coming up to say hello to Link. Hey, Link, you mind helping me herd some goats? I know it's my job, but they just, they don't listen to me. Because, well, when you herd them, you know, you're very pretty. You have a big, big horse. I tend to run around and wave my arms. Is basically the gist of this conversation. Uh, where's opponent gone? Now, only now does he miss the gigantic horse. Easily almost as tall as pretty much every character in this game. Uh, you know... 
Kind of the thing you'd notice as you rock up, but whatever. Hey, hey. guy whose name will come back to me. <laughs> come on now, hurry up and bring a pony with you. Uh, right, so we've got to go get our horse back. We can't even let Epona have a nice bath at the end of the hard working day. We have to go and we have one more job to do before we can wrap up for the day. So, we're going basically to spring our horse from from her relaxing bath. God knows. We can't have that horse just lazing around, being washed kindly by someone that cares. We're going to take this back passage because this secret little entrance here seals itself up actually after this intro sequence. Which makes no sense, because clearly it's it's here for the entire intro. But I suppose once you've got the rest of the world loaded in, it's just too much to have people crawling around. Maybe they didn't want to unnecessarily extend gameplay by making you take the long way through. But I just really wanted an excuse to have a close-up of Link's nice butt. I'm kidding. You couldn't see anything. His tunic was in the way. But he is wearing tunics with shorts, which is a bold choice. Uh, I think... And sandals. Shorts, sandals, tunic... Bold choice as we meet our primary love interest for the duration, uh, Ilya, who is, I must say, looking better. She is looking very HD. I'm loving the redo. Yep. Hey, Link. Uh, basically, she's washed the horse. And look at, look at Link. He's very, very pleased to see his horse, clearly. You know, he's, he's just happy that the horse is, is nice and clean. Freaking uh, Link is a player. Let's have a word with her. Uh, Epona worked really hard, so she deserves a treat. Oh, but listen, Link, could you do something for me? Could you use that piece of grass over there to play the song that Epona likes? You know, the one that Epona likes, you know? Almost like it's a song for Epona. Epona's song on this horseshoe-shaped grass, which, no word of a lie, is officially called horse grass. It's amazing how nature works, and how without any other impact but input but blowing, He's managed to make an entire tune from this conveniently shaped grass that happens to work on a horse. Uh, she's all pretty up now, so might as well get her off to work to completely ruin the the manicure, the pedicure, and the lovely job they've done on her mane. I must say, Epona is looking pretty great. It is kind of strange because it's it's a HD remake. They've had to make it for the Wii U because people were just demanding it so much, and I've got to say I was pretty vocal about it myself. Uh, but it is sort of strange. It's just, it's not like it's like AAA gaming next gen stuff. It's more like I remember it being when I played it first on a much smaller screen on the Wii. Back, way back then. It's just like it's scaled up and it is beautiful. It is beautiful to see. Russell, of course, loves to play with his sword as his wrist rotates beyond it. Uh, there's Mayor Bo. We'll get into meeting him a bit later on. Sarah from the shop. Her husband whose name I can't remember there's little Beth we'll talk to all of these people later on but right now we have a job to do no time to sit around just talking to people we've got work to do we can't shirk work we've got to be responsible here we have our establishing shot of Oregon Ranch complete with horse grass you would think the the goats would have eaten it by now although are they goats they call them goats but they've got horns are they all rams I mean, Oregon goat's cheese is a thing you have later on. And I mean, how do you get cheese from from uh, from all these rams? Actually, I don't want to know. Okay, these guys have been awful skittish lately, so surely, uh, you know, riding at them with a horse is the best way to calm them down, get them to go where you want them to go. I love herding go- I'm sorry, I do love this, this introduction, alright? This is how you establish Link's character. He has already got a place in the village. He's got a job, he's got some responsibility, as we see already the dissidents in the goating population just breaking away, just not following the rest, just just getting on my nerves. And there we have the rogue goat, the classic rogue element, Steve. Steve the goat, forever interfering with my efforts to herd them all very rapidly. Uh, let's see. There we go. These mavericks. A whole bunch of Steves as we try and get these goats back into the goddamn pen. Guys. Guys. No. Why would you run towards the horse you're afraid of? Run away from the horse. Run towards the ranch. Guys. Don't be a bunch of Steves, alright? Nobody likes Steve the goat, okay? I think we all agree. Steve the goat. Pretty sucky. You don't want to be Steve the goat. This is like those cautionary tales from Bioshock Infinite. Don't be a Steve the Goat! Right, here we go. There's always, in this case, two. There are two Steves, 
and they are not even talking to each other. They're just random jerkbag Steves as we're going to get in there. Get get your butt in there, Steve. And now we go over to Steve 2. Come on. Round. Come on. Come on. Naughty, naughty, naughty goat. There. Pointing in the right direction. Got a whoop. Got a... I will whoop your ass, goat. Get the butt. Get your butt. Get your butt. But well got. Thank you. Even the end, in the end, even Steve will calm down. And we have all the goats in. Much obliged to you, Link. Uh, I can cover everything tomorrow without hanging, having to trouble you. So sit back and relax, bud. <laughs> Let's see if he sticks to that. But uh, how about today? Want to practice jumping over some fences? It's very important that you get this whole fence jump mechanic down early. Hint, hint. Woo! I am going to skip out on fence jumping practice because, well... I know how to jump over fences on a pona. I played Ocarina of Time. I played Minish... Not Minish Cap. Majora's Mask. Minish Cap. A pona is in Minish Cap, fully enough, but you don't really get to ride her. You just get to talk to her. I wonder if you'll get to do that in this game. Ooh. Right. How long have I been going? Right. I have tried recording this in the past, and my hard drive had a meltdown. So, for the sake of that, I am just going to stop the recording here. For a second, for one second.